What's going on? Is that you? It's you. You're irritating me right now. Hey Cake Charms and welcome back to the Mr. Baker's Cakes Kitchen. <coughs> now in case it is unclear, I am filled with viral plague. Not coronavirus, just a cold. Must be nearly the end of term. Now in this week's video, I want to talk to you about cake structures or structured cakes. When cake designers are designing these huge elaborate cakes with like gravity defying elements and, and who knows what else going on, quite often our kind of materials of choice are threaded rod, washers, various nuts and, and bolts and things and those mythical flanges that here in the UK we never know what they are. And while I do like building those really elaborate huge cakes, much like my Paddington Bear cake, it can get awfully complicated and I can imagine it's incredibly intimidating to somebody who's never built a kind of structured gravity defying cake before. So in today's video I want to show you how to build a really simple structure that you can use to make a gravity defying character cake with materials that are a lot easier to track down and that can be adapted to create a whole host of different types of character cake. Let's get to the video. You could be forgiven for thinking this is a bit of a random video to throw up right in the middle of what has essentially been a lot of kind of Christmassy content. And you would be right, but this one came about because this week I taught my festive gonk cake demo workshop class thing to the British Sugarcraft Guild. And this cake uses this simple structure that I like to use for a lot of my kind of standing character cakes. As part of that demonstration or that workshop, I showed them how to create that structure, but because of the kind of very time-bound nature of the, the demo or the class, a lot of people said that they would like to see that element of the class or the workshop, what should I call it? But they would like to see me building that structure again a little bit slower. So I thought, well, to be fair, it would probably help out a lot of people. Let's just make a YouTube video purely focused on building this structure. Now, of course, you can use it to have a go at your very own festive Nordic gnome or gonk or whatever you like to call these chaps. But actually, it's perfect for making things like minions or, as I've already said, a whole host of different standing character cakes. I also used exactly the same structure to build this elephant standing on a pedestal. This is quite an old one now. He's uh, starting to look a bit tired. And it's even the same structure that I used in this chap as well, so my steampunk standing pug cake. Well, there's very little cake in this one, I will be honest with you, he's mainly Rice Krispie treats. But he also uses a variation on this very same structure. So hopefully that kind of gives you an indication as to how adaptable this particular structure is. Now there are a few different things you are going to need to make this structure and I'm going to kind of run through them in advance so that you can make up a bit of a shopping list and I will also link all of them down in the video description so that you know where to get hold of them. Starting from the bottom up you're going to need one of these and this is rather randomly an octopus plate which is commonly used to serve octopus as a part of a tapas meal. Tapas? Tapas. Now I was actually put onto these originally by an incredible cake artist called Carla Pooge. She uses these very often as the basis of her kind of amazing like portrait sculptures of, of people. But you buy them in multi-packs, um, I tend to get them from Amazon, and basically you just flip it upside down and it gives you this perfect pedestal to use as the base of your structure. You're also going to need something to make the platform that you're going to build your cake on and for that I tend to use moisture resistant MDF. Now generally I will cut these myself from a, obviously a bigger piece of MDF using a jigsaw but I'll be honest with you I'm, I'm not very good with a jigsaw, I've got very wobbly hands and so I was thrilled to discover that a company called Prop Options sells ready cut discs of moisture resistant MDF and this one here is a six inch round. 
you can see that they have got that perfect round edge that I can very rarely achieve on my own. So of course you can either just go and buy a big piece of MDF and cut as many of these as you want, or if like me you'd prefer somebody else to do the hard work for you, I'll put a link for where they are on the Prop Options website down in the video description. The last kind of structural element you're going to need is a thick wooden dowel that looks like this one here. Now I buy these from my local hardware store and they are 22 millimeters in diameter. So that's the measurement from one side here to the other side. And this is made from lightweight hardwood. It's very strong. And then I can just cut this down to the height that I want for my cake below the platform essentially. Sorry if I'm not making a lot of sense, I can barely think, let alone speak and talk. And then to assemble your structure together, you're just going to need a drill with a screwdriver attachment and then a couple of fairly thick screws. I believe these ones are, I have no idea, the box says number 10. Does that mean anything to anyone? I'm not the most diy -y of individuals in case that was unclear. Okay, and so basically what I'm gonna do now is go through the process of assembling this structure that I will then use to build a cake on top of, and hopefully that will make it really clear to everyone how you can use it to make some really simple, gravity-defying character cakes. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm thinking the best way to do this is to have the second camera kind of showing you my work area here so you can see what I'm doing. And I would just like to put it out there that normally I would do this using my workbench, but I wasn't sure how to fit that into my filming setup here. So we're gonna go very, well not very health and safety friendly. I would recommend that you try and work slightly more safely than I am when you are making your structure. We're going to start with our octopus tapas plate. And I've already used a ruler to measure across the plate in a few different directions and help me mark the very center point on this plate. And then what I'm essentially going to do, if I stand up, is use my drill, which has got a 2.7 mil drill piece, drill, that bit attached. I'm going to use that to drill right through the center of my plate. Hopefully you can see there is now a hole in the center there. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as well on my MDF disc. And that gives me my two layers of my platform that will go on to form my cake stand. Now, now for that gonk in particular, his legs that go up underneath his tunic are eight centimeters long. So I have cut a length of my dowel just using a simple wood hacksaw, a junior hacksaw, is that what it's called? Maybe I should have like looked all this stuff up before I filmed the video. But anyway, I've used a junior hacksaw to cut off an eight centimeter long piece of my 22 mil dowel. And that is what is essentially going to give me that platform element, which I will then build the legs of the gonk around if I was making the gonk. I'm gonna drill guide holes in this as well. And again, normally I would clamp this to a workbench and drill really safely, but I'm gonna be really naughty today and hopefully not injure myself. Please make sure you do work safely. Now the most important thing here is to make sure that you hold the drill as vertical as you can, because obviously we want our structure to be pretty spot on in terms of everything being level. So if you drill in at a weird angle, your, your structure essentially won't be as strong as it should be. I'm gonna find the center of my dowel and drill a guide hole down the center. and do the same again from the other side as well. I'm gonna sit back down again now. Can you tell that I don't cope very well with having a cold? I'm one of those stereotypical men that gets man flu and the world has to end. Okay, so I switched the drill bit to the screwdriver attachment. By the way, this, um, this electric screwdriver slash drill 
came from Ikea, it costs like £30. If you don't have one, it's perfect. It could be pink though, that would be better. But other than that, it does everything I need it to do. Okay, and now essentially it's time to assemble our structure together. If I was using this for a heavier cake, so something quite large, I would use um, some super glue as well. So I would just put some super glue down, drip it into the pre-drilled holes that we made. But because I'm just going to be making this one for you guys today, I might take it apart later. Um, I'm not going to do that step. But yes, if you want to make your structure super strong, just add a little bit of super glue into the pre-drilled holes. And then when you screw into them, that will of course set absolutely solid. So to bring everything together, we're going to start by screwing our screw through our pre-drilled hole, like that. And then we're going to take one end of our dowel and twist it on, like so. Screwing those in together now because this is a plate shape, we don't have to worry too much about the fact that that screw is sticking out slightly because the structure will still sit firmly on the worktop. If you were doing this with just a regular piece of wood, what you could do is switch to a slightly larger drill bit and just drill a little kind of alcove so that the screw head sits down inside that. Similarly then, switching to the piece of MDF, we're going to screw part way in and then place that on top and then that essentially gives you your bases to build your cake on so we've got that base here we've got that platform to put our cake on and then this bit here is what I would cover with um, some modeling chocolate or some sugar paste to conceal the central pole and allow me to, to build up my character. Again, referring back to this gong over here, I essentially got two sausages of modeling chocolate, pushed them together either side of that central pole and then shaped them to form those individual legs, which I then went on to cover with sugar paste. Now I'm trying to be mindful of the fact that the people who took the gong class did pay for it, so I don't want to give away too many secrets, but obviously they did ask for this which is why I figured it's okay to put it out there for the rest of you. Maybe I'll do that as a YouTube video next year. If you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments. Now, once it's all together, I'm just gonna give it a final twist around, check it's all nice and solidly together. And again, don't forget if you want to make it even stronger, super glue into those pre-drilled holes before you screw, and then just leave this to fully dry. Now once your structure has fully dried, you are almost ready to use it to assemble your cake. But there's one important step that cannot be missed. Because essentially at the moment we have just got bare wood. This wood could have been exposed to goodness knows what in the manufacturing process. So we have to make this food safe. Now there are lots of different ways you can make structures food safe. I know some people, particularly in the US, like to use foil tape. I don't know if you can get that here in the UK food, in a kind of food safe version. Some people use uh, normal tin foil, some people use cling film, some people use um, melted chocolate. But my favorite method to cover a wooden structure or even just wooden boards in a kind of threaded rod based structure is paper foil. Now paper foil usually comes on a roll that looks like this. This one has been shoved in the back of a cupboard for a while, so it's looking a bit battered. But this is essentially the same stuff that is on the cardboard cake boards that you buy in your local cake supply shop or even the supermarket. It's essentially paper that has a foil finish, and you can see I've pre-cut mine here into the size that I would like. Now I think Wilton sells this under the brand name of Wilton Fancy Foil, but I actually buy mine in my local cake supplies shop and they just sell it under their own branding. So what you're essentially looking for is paper foil for covering cake boards when you're searching online. But again, I will do my best to post a link down in the video description. And then to attach this to my structure, I just use bog standard print stick. Now the glue itself will be underneath the paper, so it won't be in contact with the cake, um, but also Pritstick is non-toxic, so if for any reason 
somebody managed to scratch up the paper, expose the wood underneath and the glue, you're not going to be doing anyone any sort of damage. To apply this to the structure, I literally just put plenty of prep stick all over the surface and then I'll also go around the sides like so. Hopefully you're seeing this on the second camera. Sorry if the production values are not up to my usual standards, but we were this close to not having a video this week at all. Okay, once you've got to this stage, you're going to take your piece of paper foil, and if you remember, my board, my top board there was a six inch board, this is an eight inch round of foil. And what I'm going to do is place that over the top of the structure trying to get it as central as I can because that will leave me that nice lip all the way around the outside. This might be slightly bigger than eight inches actually, but I've got about an inch and a half to two inches of space around. Then we're just gonna smooth that down so it is completely flush to the surface of the wood. You can see here that I've got a bit of a bump there where my screw sticks up. Again, if you wanted that to be recessed, just use a slightly larger drill bit to add an alcove so the screw sits right inside. But again, cake is quite soft, so it's not a massive problem. And then I'm going to use my scissors to just cut this excess into little strips all the way around that wooden circle. As I say, this is what I do whenever I'm making my own cake board. So even if I just need an unusually sized board or an unusually shaped board, then I will just cover it with this paper foil in exactly the same way, using my fret stick, and then doing this around the edges. So referring back to my Paddington, for example, which I hopefully showed you a picture of earlier, that basically had a central structure made out of threaded rod, and then it had, I think it was three wooden platforms going up through the cake to hold it all together, um, and they were covered in exactly the same way as this. Now, we're going to begin by folding one of these flaps down over that glued edge, and then because we haven't left ourselves a huge amount of room here, what we can do is go back to that glue stick and actually glue the paper rather than gluing the wood structure itself. So add a little bit of glue to the edge of the paper, fold it up over the edge of the wood, sticking it to the side, and then stick it underneath like that. Just keep doing that all the way around until you've covered the whole thing. And then again, once you've done that, you should end up with something that looks like this, and that can be set aside to dry so that that glue has fully secured the paper to the wood. Now, if you're planning on using cake down here underneath the platform as well, I would use the same foil paper to cover this base part and also the, the central wooden dowel as well. But for the gonk in particular, because it was just covered in modeling chocolate, that I had no intention of people eating, I'll be honest with you, I didn't bother to food safe that central dowel. That's really up to you. Plus, also, nobody is gonna eat mine now. He's been sat there for a few weeks. And then once I've built up that central bit, what I'll do to cover the base is roll out some sugar paste, cut a small hole from the middle and a slit to the side, and then I'll just drape it across the platform, sticking it into place with a little water, and then blending the seams where they meet around the pole and trimming off the excess just like you would any other covered cake board. But that is essentially how to build my basic cake structure for sanding character cakes that, as you saw earlier on in the video, I used to make things like minions, that I used to make my Christmas gongs over here, that I used to make the elephant, the sanding pug, and all sorts of other different cakes. Now again, as I've already said, because the, the Nordic Gnome or the Gonk was a paid for demonstration, I'm not going to be demonstrating that here on my YouTube channel. But if you would like to see me use this structure to do another type of cake, then do head down to the comments and let me know. 
you know, that would be absolutely fine. And I do love making seemingly gravity defined cakes, so that could be fun to do together. But for those of you who did attend my um, Norbert the Nordic Gnome workshop, I do hope that that has made things a little bit clearer for you. If you do still have any questions, then of course do head down to the comments and ask away and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you too for all of the lovely comments that you have been leaving on my most recent videos. Of course, my top 10 gift ideas for cake decorators, which went up last week. That's proven really popular, so thank you so much for all of your support. Of course, in that video, I did announce that I was going to be running a little Christmas giveaway of some of the bits included in my top 10 list. And thank you so much to everyone who entered and also to all of the people who shared it with their friends and their followers and so on on their cake pages. We had so many entries and I would love to be able to give something to every single person, but unfortunately, obviously that's not really practical. But what I'll do is I'll pop up the name of the winner on the screen. Um, congratulations to that person. And if they could get in contact with me, um, I think I even on social media. If they can head over to my Facebook page, which is linked down in the video description, and send me a private message, then we can make contact and arrange getting your prize over to you. Again, thank you so much to everyone else who did enter. Apologies you didn't win this time, but I do run regular giveaways right here on my YouTube channel, so keep an eye out for the next one. Best way to make sure you don't miss it, of course, is to hit that big red subscribe button and to ring the bell so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. If you are new here and you're here for the first time, then don't forget to check out some of the other cake related content I have right here on my channel. We of course do have plenty of recipes and tutorials, but also lots of other kind of slightly more fun and creative cake adjacent content to and we would love to have you join us right here by hitting that red subscribe button. Just before I do wrap things up, apologies if this does seem a little bit quick and rushed this weekend. As I say, I am feeling a little bit under the weather, but I didn't want to leave you guys in the lurch without a video this weekend. So this is my attempt to kind of follow through on a promise that I made to the people who were at my workshop and also, of course, make sure that I was able to announce my winner and maybe even help just one or two of you out as well with your cake structure dramas. If you did enjoy this video, as always, please do make sure to give it a like using the thumbs up button because that will tell YouTube to show it to more people. And I think on that note, I'm gonna wrap things up. Um, go and have a drink of something hot and I'll see you guys at the same time next week for another video. Until then, take care guys and happy caking.